I was sitting there, like, yeah, I'm going to enjoy the next presentation, and it's me. So, um, I don't know if I'll walk around. I might walk around a little bit, but try not to walk around too much. Um, I'm going to try and make this a bit of a whirlwind tour, because I don't want to bore you all to death with a great amount of detail. But what I'm looking at here are the internet exchange points, um, really in the part of the world that I live live in. I live in Australia. Um, had a fair old trek to come here, but I've come here to visit family as well. So I didn't come just for this trip, although I'm delighted to be part of the 25th um, anniversary celebra celebration. So um, we're going to look at some of these, as I say there, and I'm going to upset people because I know this is webcast and we'll probably go on YouTube at some point as well. Like I did this two years ago, I had a few people saying, you missed me out. I was like, well, I'm really sorry. I know, you know, I'll talk about the ones I know about. There are a few others that probably either very small or not quite the, I mean, I'm focusing more on the neutral interconnects, the open neutral interconnects, and then pointing out one or two other places where they're not really open neutral, but at least there's some kind of inter interconnect to keep local traffic local. Um, just for the, the thank yous, um, I mean, I represent uh, Network Startup Resource Center um, as part of my day job. Um, I do quite a bit of work for various organizations, but NSRC support a lot of the exchange point work that I'm doing. Um, it's not really as well established as everything is in Europe. Um, so there's still places where we need these interconnects. And certainly with NSRC, APNAC, uh, PCH, and ISOC, there was quite a lot of effort going on to get exchange points established in quite a few places. Uh, there's a lot of help available as well. Lots of people are interested in helping getting these interconnects going up. I mean, it depends what it is. You know, if we go into the Pacific, a lot of it is always a very nice, well, we do the BGP workshop or a peering workshop or a basic how to set up an exchange point. People are very excited about it all. They go back home and then they come again in six months' time and we repeat all over again. So quite, sometimes we have to do the facilitating of meetings of stakeholders, holding a lot of hands, as you see from some of the examples coming up. Um, switches are the easy problem. Um, we can get any simple one 10 gig switch um, for pretty much you know, $1,000 or wherever. Um, so that's not really the big issue, but it's always promoted as, oh, well, you know, equipment. Um, and equipment is the easy part. It's the politics and getting people to talk to each other, which tends to be the, the hardest. So let's have a quick look. So I'm starting in South Asia, then I'll go to Southeast Asia, then Northeast Asia, and then down to the Pacific. So Afghanistan... Um, well, actually, there was something new that got started this year. I don't know if any of you noticed that. Um, and it was this Nixa. I'm not quite sure what it is. I've been trying to find out, out a little bit more. It is an interconnect. We had um, two IXs started in the past. You know, 2004 started trying to go as the country was being rebuilt. Popped up again in 2009. There was one got up and running in 2011 in Kabul, and then it all vanished. But this, this Nixa thing, and I've, actually the website seems to work, and it has this graph, and I'm not quite sure what it means, but that's the graph that's on the website, or at least it was a couple of days back. Um, but it seems to be some kind of layer three interconnect. I saw the press release and pictures of routers and so on, so not sure. But at least there is some local internet interconnect because most of the providers are all satellite connections out to various parts of the world. So whatever it is, it does help. Bangladesh was the second exchange point in South Asia, um, 2004, doing well, running great. Um, the pictures I shared two years ago are a lot better. I'm not going to share the picture this time because I don't have an up-to-date one, but um, they definitely won the prize for probably the world's worst rat's nest as far as cables go. Um, everything was media connectors, uh, media converters. Um, wireless into the building, media converters um, to connect into the Ethernet switch. But life's a lot better now, 60 gig of traffic or so. So it is very successful um, open interconnect in Dhaka. Bhutan, that started two years ago. Um, that was one of the last um, places in South Asia to get an exchange point. Um, 
seven members, although if you look at the IXP database, it says the 12, so I'm not quite sure why there's a difference, but anyway, the seven members. Um, aggregate traffic is 600 meg. I included this one um, in here at the bottom. Um, I had to find out the other day what that was all about. And um, the two big operators were exchanging the Google Cache, Facebook, Akamai across the IX, and then they stopped doing that. Um, and so now it's over the PNI instead. So it, the traffic went from six gig down to about six, 700 meg. Um, so it's just between each other. The other members, the, the caches are all shared. That's part of the conditions of the caches coming there because the country doesn't actually have enough traffic to justify any of these caches. So um, that took many years to make happen, um, but we finally got there. Um, that was definitely a challenge of getting people to trust each other to set this thing up. Um, India, I should move swiftly on. I mean, Nixie, um, even Nixie agrees that it wasn't a wild success. Um, they started off with mandatory peering policy, um, and that just doesn't work when you've got three different tiers of providers in the country. Mumbai IX kind of broke that mold, um, started off as the convergence hub. Uh, it's not operated by DKIX. Um, we've got Extreme IX, which is basically competing with Mumbai IX now. M6 are partnering with SIFI, just to add to the fund, also in Mumbai. You go to Mumbai, you can certainly interconnect in a lot of places. Uh, as for the rest of the country, iPhone, which is the India Internet Foundation, built an IX in Calcutta. It's quite a small one. Um, and they're planning other locations in some of the small cities around India. So, you know, 10 years ago, if you spoke to me, India would be my favorite rant about how broken everything is. Um, but at least things are getting better, um, at least as far as Chennai and, sorry, as Mumbai, Chennai, New Delhi, and so on are going. Um, Maldives, nothing. Two operators. Nepal was the first um, exchange point in South Asia, 2002. Um, 40 members, the two locations in Kathmandu. Pretty much all local traffic in Nepal goes through the exchange points. So you can see about um, six gig. Um, what was the recent event? Was the World Cup or something like that? They went over like 40 or 50 gig or something um, when that was happening. I don't remember the exact number, but it was huge. Um, I think it was the World Cup um, that caused that. Pakistan, um, so there have been trials and failures there. The first exchange point was run by the Talco. Um, that wasn't really an exchange. The second one started, failed. The third one, PKIX, uh, launched in 2017 in Islamabad. It was part of SANOG, the South Asian Network Operators Group meeting. Um, they launched it then. Uh, the second site, Karachi, which is the major city on the seaport. Um, it's now operational, five members. Lahore is being worked on. The website is out of date. They know that, um, but there are other issues with why that is. So at least something is happening there. Sri Lanka, there isn't any open neutral IX. Uh, Sri Lanka Telecom, sorry, Lankacom run the slicks, but um, sorry, yeah, Sri Lanka Telecom run the slicks, but it's not really an open neutral IX. It's kind of more the model of the telco providing an interconnect for their members which, well, doesn't really go into my um, book of exchange points. Um, Brunei, nothing. Uh, Telbru is the main operator. They run an IX, but same story. Cambodia, um, the neutral interconnect is this one, the Cambodia Network Exchange in Phnom Penh. Very pretty graph. Um, I don't quite know what it all means, but I guess it must be the individual <laughs> members or something without saying who they are. But this, as you see, quite a bit of traffic there. Um, as well. That's been running since 2008. Um, major sponsor, Sabi Digital. It's not like they run it. If you look at the website, it's, you know, it looks um, genuine, open, good, neutral interconnect. Um, 35 peers and quite a bit of traffic. Uh, Indonesia, a couple of exchanges, at least the, the NICE, which is the big one, um, formed in 2010, 700 members. Um, and then there is the IIX, which is run by APCHI, which is the TLD operator and um, National Internet Registry for Indonesia. Um, but um, NICE is, is, the big, is the big interconnect. Lao, nothing. So Lao, by decree, everybody must connect to LANIC, which is not a network information center. It's the National Internet Center, where everybody must connect, and everybody must connect out to from the country. So 
Even though they will talk about exchange points, it's still not an interconnect that we know. It's basically a, you know, the national carrier, everything aggregated going out to Thailand and Vietnam. Um, Malaysia, my IX, long history there, 2006. It's neutral, non-profit, but set up by the government, which well, again causes some people to pause. Uh, six locations around Malaysia. And then very recently, there's Johor Bahru, IX. That's cleverly positioned in the southern city, just across the, state, the strait from Singapore. So they can get everything that Singapore has without the Singapore prices. Um, and that one is now a partnership with DKX, 44 participants, um, and certainly quite a bit of traffic. It's very, very new. They just had their own peering meeting a few weeks ago. Um, what else? Myanmar, uh, you wouldn't expect, but two years ago, there was nothing and no talk, and then suddenly MMIX appeared, neutral, industry-owned association, around eight gig of traffic um, for membership categories. And again, following what we see as like, best practices for website and reporting and so forth. They also facilitate MMNOG, the local network operator group, and the peering forum as well. So they've gone from nobody talking to each other when I was there about four years ago, nobody wanted to talk, to suddenly there's this really vibrant um, local community happening, which is good to see. Philippines, long term, the Philippine Open IX 2011, there was effort at trying to do an exchange point before then, but it really took um, Department of Science and Technology to get one going. Um, yes, it's government, but uh, ASTI runs the RE network, Research and Education Network for the Philippines, so the exchange point is really part of that um, effort. About 60 gig of traffic, and they've got nodes in Metro Manila and also Cebu, which is a bit further south. Um, there actually are, I mean, I was at PHNOG a few months ago, and there actually are other efforts to set up smaller interconnects in the Philippines as well. So it's not that PH Open IX is the one and only, there are, there are other smaller ones that are now being set up. So traffic levels are about 60 gig, as you can see there. Who's next? Singapore. Yeah, Singapore is massive. Um, it's really the data center interconnect city for Southeast Asia. It forms the interconnect for South Asia as well, because there's no interconnect that you can go to in South Asia. All the operators, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, all end up in Singapore, and they all interconnect there. India is missing a massive opportunity, but that's just between you and me here. And anybody else listening, India is mass missing massive. They know it. We keep saying it. Uh, every time we have South Asia network operators group there, we keep saying it, but they're quite happy for Singapore to get their success. So apart from Equinix, Singapore, uh, the commercial um, data center interconnect, we've got SGIX, um, which has been running since 2010. And actually the first one, Singapore Open Exchange, was started by the university, National University of Singapore, um, in 2001. Um, and they started it because Singtel was promoting their IX, which was the domestic transit business. So two years ago, I talked at length about Thailand. Um, I spared you the picture of the Internet of Thailand. Somebody actually draws the graph, I mean the, the layout of the Internet in Thailand. I spared you that this time, because just as well, because <laughs> the screen's not the brightest or the highest resolution. But Basically, there, each operator who has an international transit license must run an IX, which is for their customers for local traffic. And anybody else can join if they want, but they don't. So how many international transit providers are there now? Is it 9, 10, 11, 12, something like that? Can you imagine trying to connect to all of them? Of course not. That's why we set up exchange points in the first place. So therefore, we have the Bangkok Neutral Internet Exchange set up in 2015 to try and solve that problem. Um, Operated by TH Nick Foundation, which, you know, again, TH Nick runs the .th top level domain. They've got two locations in the city. Um, it's the first and only one, but only 27 members because most of the operators are tied into their transit provider and trying to see the value of going to the IX is kind of interesting. But 16 gig of traffic, and like quite a few of the others, they operate their own peering forum every year. Um, it's getting bigger and better. So I think we had about 200 participants at the peering forum in May this year. Um, where else do we go? Team Aleste, uh, no exchange point. The two operators there talking about 
interconnection at least, so that's a start. We'll see how that goes over the next year or so. Uh, Vietnam, so VNIC, which runs the .vn and also the National Internet Registry, also run the exchange point. Um, there's no NOG in, Viet in Vietnam, but there is the Vietnam Exchange Point NOG. So there's a VNIC NOG. So anyway, 18 members um, in the three main cities in Vietnam. Um, Access speeds, as I mentioned there, and again, the website has got some of the stats available. What else? China mainland, the CHNIX, not know much about it, but I managed to work out through the website to look at traffic graph there, so that's sort of hitting peaks of 50 or 60 gigabit per second. I think that's, don't know if that's Beijing or if it's um, Beijing, um, Shanghai, and Guangzhou aggregated. Um, I don't know. It's One thing I can't do is read Chinese, and I think I need to ask somebody to try and decipher what all that, that covers. But at least there is that carrier neutral interconnect. I believe it's partnering with, with AM6. It certainly was um, a couple of years ago when I last uh, looked at it. Hong Kong, very big. HKIX is the oldest exchange point in, in our region, April 1995. So not long after links. I think HKIX was inspired by what we were doing here in London. Um, hosted and operated by the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Um, 322 participants. Uh, the graph is talking about 1.3, 1.4 terabits per second of traffic. Um, there's also M6 in Hong Kong in partnership with HEC, uh, substantially smaller, 54 members, um, and a small fraction of the traffic. Uh, but HKIX, again, apart from the Equinix data centers, is probably the best known of the open IXs. Where else? Japan. Um, I'll leave that to um, our friends who will be following me from JPIX. They can talk more about the local community, but I don't know. Japan is just excellent in general. We started off with wide running, well, what was NSPIXP2, now known as Dixie. And then, of course, we've got JPNAP, JPIX, BBIX, and there are probably others. And sorry if I miss anybody out there, but those are very, very well established. And actually, you know, these three are very, very supportive of exchange point development across the region as well. So um, it's a very well uh, operated community. Korea, I can't quite work out what Kinks is. Um, it is Korea Internet <laughs> Neutral Exchange, but if you go to the website, the exchange point seems to be like what they do 5% of the time, and it's cloud services and China gateways and goodness knows what else for the rest of the time. But it seems to be looking what we do, uh, well, like what, you know, as a proper IX, as opposed to KIX, which is just Korea Telecom's transit business. Um, but Kinks certainly, and they, you know, they come to exchange point meetings and talk about the interconnect. Um, Mongolia, no, that's another long story. Mongolia Exchange is called the Mix, and the Mix is probably the history, a bit of a mix. We started off with Mix, which was static routes. Um, OpenMix was created through neutral interconnect by a few ISPs. Um, and that, you know, 6509 and so on, it was running quite nicely. But then the government and the regulator said, no, 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 government needs to do this. So it all moved into the national data center and became a very closed mix. Um, as Curtis knows, when we tried to go and visit, we were told that we couldn't get to see it. Uh, we did some... Um, uh, end maps of the LAN and discovered all kinds of interesting Windows servers sitting on the exchange point LAN, so we have no idea what it was even then. It's still there, but nobody knows what it is, quite what it's doing. Regulator got a meeting, I mean, Curtis and I sat in that meeting, so you can ask him about some of the stories. Um, not really much agreement apart from they need something. So the two carriers, international carriers, Gemnet and Mobicom, now run their own exchange points. And the regulator the other week was still telling me, no, no, Mongolia needs an open neutral exchange point. So we'll see what happens. Um, Taiwan, TWIX, um, 1997, and then more recently the TPIX, but again, the two fairly well established interconnects there. Um, where else? Okay, into the Pacific, Australia. Um, IX Australia, non-profit organization, um, runs the exchange points, or some of the exchange points in Australia. I've missed out others here. 
um, but it's non-profit, carrier, commercial, neutral, runs, started off with the Western Australia one, that's the historical well-known one, 1997, and then have set up other exchange points in other states around the country. Um, so capacity up, gas, capacities there up to 100 gig. There are also smaller ones, there's the Edge IX has just started up, but there's not really much info on the web page, and a few other small efforts as well around the country. But very much IX Australia is the, the exchange point operator um, that we have. And just for quick advert, you know, IX Australia is actually one of the, well, partly hosting uh, the Apricot Conference in February next year in, in Melbourne, which is our big uh, regional internet operations conference. Um, Fiji, ah yes, established last year, 2018, it's not open, it's not neutral, um, it's at the cable landing station, how open and neutral is that? You can't get in, um, it's owned by Fintel, which is the international carrier, um, it's you know, on the far side of Suva, the capital, facilitated by the telecom authority of Fiji, the only website is that, which is an announcement that there's an exchange point, there's no info, you can't really find out much about it publicly, um, unless you know the people there. It's only for Fiji ISPs, so the five um, operators, no sorry, four operators. Three of them are owned by the same holding company. Um, so Fintel, Telecom Fiji, Vodafone Fiji, all owned by ATH. Um, and then there's Digicel, which is the competing mobile operator. Um, with Persuasion, we got University of South Pacific in there, which is the biggest bandwidth consumer in Fiji. Um, so they're the non-Telco member. And I'd heard that there were, the IPTV providers were also going to join the IX as well. The neighboring islands, I, I put in the map of the, that area of the Pacific from ITU just to show the fiber systems. But, you know, Vanuatu is here. Can Vanuatu join the Fiji exchange? Nope. Uh, Tonga? Nope. Tonga's down at the bottom right here. Can any of the Samoans join? No. Nope. So we have issues to address there. Fiji really doesn't want to be the center of the Pacific, no matter how much the government says. They do want to be the center of the Pacific. So work is needed there. Great shame about location choice, but that's how it is. Guam. So Marix was established in 2018, host the University of Guam because there's no neutral data center. Um, and again, I put on just where the fiber goes. So Guam is center of everything, but the fiber just goes straight through. There's very little breakout and very little incentive to break out. Getting a cross connect across the island, at least a couple of members of the audience here know is massively expensive because the incumbents pretty much say, how much could we charge these people? Um, Docomo hosts and operates the GUIX, but it's not open, obviously. It's Docomo, the carrier, and, and not neutral either. So it's only local operators are in there. It's kind of a shame. There's so much potential for Guam. There is an r &E exchange as well. So the research and education networks want to interconnect there. The infrastructure's there. Getting cross-connects across the island is another story. Great shame, but it, it'll happen eventually. New Zealand. New Zealand is actually very interesting. Um, you know, it's again one of the early interconnects being all set up. So NZIX was operate, well, is operated by CityLink. Um, so they run the Ape, the Wicks, and the Chicks. Um, New Zealand does have a good sense of humor about choosing names for the exchange point. I'm going to stop there. There are others that I can't um, repeat here. But anyway, the, these three, um, decent amount of traffic. They've been around there for a long time. But more recently, we've had um, IX New Zealand come in, non-profit carrier neutral IX from 2016. They're in Auckland. Now, the main difference between the APE, the APE is in the telecom tower in Auckland. So you know the BT tower here. Imagine putting an exchange point at the top of the BT tower. Well, that's where the APE is. It's at high up the telecom tower. You can bungee jump from that very nicely, but getting access, pulling equipment up there is pretty hard. So, IXNZ went to normal data centers, and so you can see the membership and the amount of traffic um, they're actually um, picked up very, very quickly. And that was showing the traffic, the graph there, which you can't see, but you can see it in the slides later on. And what else? Papua New Guinea. Oh, this is probably the longest, most drawn-out, painful one. 
Established in 2017 after 15 years of trying, when I first tried to do something in PNG in 2002 to get an IX set up. How many Pacific Network Operator Group workshops did we do? Um, efforts by the community. Yes, we'll give you a switch. Yes, getting everything set up. Uh, PNG Telecom even petitioned the network into transit AS and domestic AS to be ready for the IX. Nothing. So finally, NICTA, the, which is basically the regulator, said, right, this is silly that all the PNG traffic is going through Australia. Australia wins, PNG doesn't. So finally got this, ISOC, NSRC, and then APNIC all had to go at getting this IX up and running. Sadly, the website is not up to date, um, but it is there. There are people connected to it. So again, part of the effort is to try and get some of this info a little bit more public, at least in the IXP database, so that some of you can see what's going on. Have I finished? Not quite. Vanuatu, uh, first Pacific exchange point. Tiny little country caused real embarrassment in Papua New Guinea and Fiji. You know, PNG is about, what, six million population. It's bigger than New Zealand. Fiji, also much bigger than Vanuatu, couldn't agree. Vanuatu just went and did it. They had, what's it, five ISPs, I think, at the time. So the government, the main network guide, the government used to work for the telecom. So it wasn't like government coming in to say, it was Jethro coming in to say, and he just went and did it. And so housing the government data center, the only neutral place. Before they even had submarine fiber, it was making a big difference. But when the fiber finally landed, I think it was 2013, then the whole IX and interconnect took off. So that was pretty good. As for the rest, Samoa is talking, talking, talking. Uh, the three operators there, they see Fiji's doing nothing. So they're now talking about being the center of the Pacific and doing the Pacific interconnect thing. So let's see, you know, you know they're talking about open exchange point, you know, no restriction who can come in there. Um, other nations usually have an incumbent and a mobile operator and they don't even connect to each other. You can go around that, some of the other small countries. Even if they'd private peered, we'd be a lot happier, but they just, you know, Digicel will not connect to the incumbent, full stop. Um, and we've got this thing, South Pacific idea, uh, sorry, South Pacific exchange point idea. And what's that about is getting all the countries all connected to one central place and we'll all be happy with a big exchange point. Only nobody has decided who's going to pay for it. So, but you know, this comes up and round every two, three, four, five years. So that's the latest one. You can follow that URL and yes, anyway. Pacific is very big. Um, I mean, I live here. The UK would fit in about there. So it's quite a large area to try and cover, but huge amount of submarine fiber compared to probably even five years ago. So there's certainly the obvious opportunities for interconnects, Fiji, uh, some more. Of course, Hawaii way up there, Guam way up there. Uh, again, where submarine fiber meets, but trying to get the operators to think about interconnecting there as well is still an ongoing challenge. So as you can see, an Asia, sorry, a South Pacific IX kind of, I don't know, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. That's it. Um, usual acknowledgements. Thank you to NSRC for supporting some of this. Curtis has traveled a lot of places with me, so he knows some of this part well. Of course, FTAB and Jane at ISOC, PCH. Cisco helped me do a lot of this years and years ago, and APNIC did as well. So thank you all very much. Hope it was interesting. Hope the tour was fast enough. I can leave you to the next one. Any questions? John. Why was the traffic always 60 gig? I kept noticing as Don't know. I don't know why it was always 60 gig, but it just seems to be. I mean, the... I suspect a lot of it might be to do with caches. You know, the Google cache, Facebook cache, Akamai, quite a lot of exchange points. The operators, or we will encourage the operators to share the caches across the, the IX. So that could be a story behind some of it. Yeah. Okay. I will run away. Thank you all very much.